Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Wagam Song Timkulu and I have been speaking about different health conditions as well as my life of living with a chronic condition as well. So what I've been doing over the past few weeks is explaining different health conditions in more detail as well as how you can manage and prevent them. Now the series that I just did was on cardiovascular risk factors. These are your high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, diabetes, etc. So what they have in common is that they can lead to developing a cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular diseases affect mainly your heart as well as the circulation of your blood in your system. For example, of different cardiovascular diseases is heart attack and stroke. So what I want to do today is speak about management and prevention in more detail. And what I'll do is give you the ACSM recommendations for aerobic and strength activities on a, on a weekly basis, as well as show you the different types of aerobic activities that you can do as well as the strength activities that you can do and how to do them properly right so it is important to note that these can be done to help prevent a condition or to help manage the condition but also remember that there is a psychological as well as a biological component and that even though you are doing specific exercises to manage or prevent an illness won't, it doesn't mean that you will not get the illness at all. All right, so firstly, I must state that please, please do not partake in any exercise activities at a high level of intensity if you, are, if you have not exercised before. And if you are currently not exercising or do you have any other conditions or dealing with bad high blood pressure that is not managed etc please do get clearance from your doctor a normal gp will do uh, to say that you can exercise it is important to do that before you partake in any exercise activities all right please guys if you do enjoy this video don't forget to give it a nice big fat like and to share it spread some exercises out to the world as well as different ways that we can manage these um, conditions and then lastly to subscribe to my channel if you wish to learn about more conditions learn about me and my life with living with a chronic condition as well as see ways that you can manage different diseases as such as this video i hope you guys will enjoy it now let's get straight into it Started, I need to say that living with a chronic illness can be tough because you may be taking different types of medications. Unfortunately, some medications do have uh, side effects and of those, some of those side effects may be water retention or weight gain. So even though you are eating healthy or exercising and doing what you need to do to try to shed weight and all that, it may be difficult because of that side effect from that medication and so when you start doing these exercises i ask that your main goal should be changing your lifestyle and living a healthy lifestyle and loving your body in that way instead of trying to lose weight for example myself i have a chronic illness and i have changed my lifestyle by eating healthy and exercising but because I've been switching and changing the different medications that I'm on at the moment, I have been retaining a lot of water and so losing weight has been tough for me and sometimes sticking with my exercise routine has been tough because of fatigue and all that. But I'm trying to love my body and give it the right nutrition that it needs and that should be what your main goal is as well. Firstly, the ACSM guidelines for activity 
generally consist of your aerobic or endurance activities, your strength activities, and then your flexibility. But I'll just be talking about aerobic and strength. So in terms of aerobic, the aim is to do about 30 to 60 minutes of moderate intensity uh, five, uh, activity five days a week. So this would basically be like a brisk walk sort of vibe. You could also or, or also do with conjun in conjunction to that or separate to that vigorous or high intensity activities three days a week. And what you want to do is do it for about 20 to 60 minutes, right? So that'll be more high intensity, more fast, faster running, like sprinting, etc., or long jogging instead of a brisk walk. Next, you have your strength activities. You want to do this about two to three days a week. And the great thing is that you can incorporate it with your aerobic activity and include it in that full 60 minutes. And what you want to do here is focus on your big muscle groups. Those are your legs, your core, your chest, your back, your arms. And you want to do about 8 to 20 reps per set of activity that you do. Now, the fewer reps that you do will be more focused on building muscle and strength. Whereas the more reps you do, we focus on more endurance of your muscles. So when it comes to preventing the illness, or preventing a chronic condition, you generally will end up only doing something that will be in between like 12 reps to try increase your strength as well as decrease any body fat if you do have at that time. But if you already have a chronic condition, unfortunately with cardiovascular risk factor diseases, it is possible to have more than one. So the person may be obese as well as have high blood pressure. So you have to look at yourself as a whole. In that situation, you'll be wanting to decrease your blood pressure as well as uh, shed a bit of weight. And so you'll do more uh, reps with your strength activities you might end up doing 20 reps uh, in total once you're much stronger to try and shed more uh, weight off of you so it all depends on where you're sitting in terms of your weight as well as your exercise activity level before you decide how many reps you do but generally starting at eight reps if you haven't exercised before is a good idea and if you get, as you get stronger and wish to shed more weight, you can go up to 20 reps with that. The first aerobic activity that you can do is walking. Walking is something that we do on a daily basis when we go to the shops, when we wake up to go to the kitchen, to make food, etc. So walking is quite a fundamental thing to do. Now, when exercising using walk, walking, you want to keep it at a moderate pace. This means that you're walking at a more brisk pace rather than a slow and relaxed pace. Another type of aerobic activity that you can do is running or jogging. Running is a bit more faster than jogging. So it'd be just walking at a faster pace. So you can start with walking, Press to jogging and finish off with running and increase the, the distance of time however you wish depending on what your goals are with the activity. Another nice activity that you can do is skipping. Skipping is nice because it works your whole body as would running or walking would and it is but it can also be seen as a more vigorous type of activity so you can either use it as a warm-up or you can use it as part of your exercise activity for that day and um, slotting it in in between your strength sets. Okay, so the next activity that you can do is simple high knees. What you want to do is sort of run on the spot, getting your knees up as high as you possibly can. So looking at the side, you want to get it up nice and high. Try to do opposite arm and leg. It may help with not falling over in any specific way. 
Perhaps I will just do it on the spot. This is not jogging on the spot, doing you know, parties. It's up there. Next, we have butt kicks. Seven of honeys, jogging on the spot takes it. Now you're trying to kick your butt. So you want to get your leg up nice, as high as you can towards your bum area. All right, let's go. The last aerobic activity that I'll be showing you today is a star jump or a jumping jack. So with this, what you want to do is jump and form a star with your body and then jump and relax again. So you would jump up, form a star and then bring it together. So the first activity that you can do is calf races. Alright, with calf races, what you want to make sure that you're doing is hinging at your ankle joint and not rocking back and forth throughout the activity. And what you'll do is go onto your tippy toes and go back down. So next we have squats. Squats generally work your thighs, your core, as well as your buttocks. With squats, what you want to do is make sure that your legs are hip width apart or slightly wider. You can point your legs slightly out if you want or keep them straight, it's up to you. Now before we go down into our squat, we need to make sure of three things. Firstly, that you squeeze your tummy muscles throughout. If I look at this side, what will happen is our core will sort of sink in. If my back is relaxed like this, it will start to, start to straighten out. And that's how you do with the straight up activating your core. The next thing that you want to make sure with your squat is that your knees do not fall in when you go down and when you come up. You need to keep your knees nice and strong and keep it a uni movement. <laughs> and then the last thing is that you want to make sure that your knees don't fall too far forward. So what you're doing is you're not hinging at your knees, you are hinging at your hips. As you, if you're sitting down into a chair. Alright, so here we go. Hinge at the hips, pull that tummy in. Go down into a squat, don't let your knees fall in, come back up, hinge, down, hinge, down.
size has a lot of names. It could either be a glute bridge, a bridge, a hip lift, a pelvic lift, all doing the same thing. What you do in this exercise is work mainly your buttocks and your core. So the first thing you'll have to do is lie on your back with your knees bent and at hip width apart. It will look something like this. When you're in this position, nice and relaxed, what you'll do next is activate your core the same way we did in our squats is by bringing your belly button towards your spine. Sort of like squeezing a grape that could be underneath you. So this is relax, squeeze the grape. Once we are in this position, you will lift your hips up. Lift as high as you can, but make sure that you form a nice straight line from your knees down to your shoulders. Go back down and relax. Keep your core activated throughout. your coordination as well so with your dead bucks what you'll do as well you'll also be lying on your back and you'll form a dead bug so if we think of a dead bug generally the leg the arms are up and straight as well as the legs so this is the starting position note my core here I'm squeezing the grip I'm not relaxed and having an arch in my back so squeeze your grip throughout, arms nice and straight, legs nice and straight. Then what you'll do is you're going to drop your right leg and your left arm at the same time, keeping your left leg and your right arm where they are. So drop them nice and straight, keeping that grip squashed and bring them back up. And then alternate. So now right arm, left leg, and back up. top part of your core slightly up off the ground so again you'll be on your back with your knees bent what you can what I what I prefer to do rather is to keep my arms on my thighs sort of to help me know how far to go for a crunch now the crunch it is only this top part that is moving up this top part okay so what you're going to do is you're going to crunch up activating from your core not your head so you won't be going head and then core you'll be going core and then head so keeping it up what you want to go is all the way up until your fingers touch your knees and back down core up and back down
So the last strength activity that I'm going to show today is a push-up. I'll be using the woman's push-up as a starting point, which could then either be made easier or made harder into a man's push-up. So with your push-up, what you want to do is go onto your hands and knees, and you want to make sure that your shoulder's above your wrist, and it can either be shoulder-width apart or slightly wider. So I'm going to do it shoulder width apart. Okay? Make sure that your knees are nice and comfortable. In this position, you don't want to arch your back. You want to make sure that your core is activated by pulling your belly button towards your spine. Right? Once you're in this position, you're going to go down into a push-up and come straight back up. Alright, throughout, you don't want to arch your back, nor do you want to work from your core or from your bum. What you want to do is move down in one motion, using your chest muscles to push you back up. Core nice and strong, all the way down and up. tuning in. I hope this video does help you and giving you a few exercises that you can start doing today if you have been cleared from your doctor. Please guys don't forget to start at your own pace. Don't try to be at a higher pace or at a higher goal that you used to be at if you're not there yet. Start slow and build up. If you have not gotten clearance from your doctor and you need it, Please do that first before you partake in any type of activity so that you don't cause any other issues or any other effects and that you can benefit from these exercises more. Alright, also guys, don't forget to like this video if you did enjoy it, to share it, share some exercises, share some things that people can do to start changing their life today. And lastly, to subscribe to my channel as I will be posting more videos like this and telling you about my life, my story of living with a chronic condition. So guys, thank you again. I hope you do have a great week ahead and I will definitely see you next week.